Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is Mother's Day 2019. Shout out to my man Frank Bryson for the song request. He wanted me to play some All Eyes on Me. No doubt, bro. This is a classic. I'm, I bump this on a weekly basis for sure. Long live Tupac Shakur. And he, <laughs> he and listen, guys, this is funny because. This is funny on two levels here. One being he's writing in <laughs> in some Linux command code here. Install BTC Moon. And you know what a funny thing is? He sent this about a month ago. This is not a new um, song request. I'm about, a, about three weeks to a month behind. So it's interesting that I'm doing this today for him. And the second reason that this is interesting is because I was sitting at home thinking... I was like, you know, man, I see a lot of people on Twitter and, and, you know, on YouTube, primarily on YouTube, in Telegram rooms, and, you know, so many people have so many opinions, and it's just funny because my thing, I think people should listen to, if you're going to listen to someone in the crypto space, and, and this is unlike other financial markets, cryptos are the only financial markets that you really need someone, if you're, if you're going to follow someone's lead, it needs to be someone who has a technical background. And, and I'm talking about from a macro standpoint, as far as a person that kind of will understand which direction the markets are going overall. You probably need someone who has a more technical background because they're going to see things that uh, others with non-technical backgrounds won't see. Just make sure you guys are following people like myself. I have a computer science background. Follow people who have a technical background when it comes to just macro uh, perspectives on the crypto markets. Not saying that other people don't have correct ideas. They do. Um, but I'm just, I just thought about that and I thought I would share that with you guys. Make sure the core people that you follow in this game have a technical background. And again, that doesn't mean that, uh, that's mandatory, but surely in your toolkit, you should have people who are technical, uh, in nature, or at least have been around the technical space in the technology field. Maybe not hands on with being technical, but understand technology from a broad perspective uh it's good to have that in this game and it's a unique position because unlike cryptos equities you you don't have to have a technical background that may give you some edge uh when evaluating companies but you can simply just look at a balance sheet you know what i'm saying you can you you really need more of a financial background in that game than anything you can look at the p l's you know, the balance sheets, look, you know, read K1 reports. You do all that stuff on the on the equity side to get a better view of a particular stock. But in crypto, that's not really the way you evaluate whether or not uh, a token that you hold or a cryptocurrency you, ha- you hold is, is going to be successful in the future. Of course, nothing is guaranteed. But again, follow people. At least have one or two people in your chest, in your YouTube, Twitter following list. You got to listen to people who are more technical people. That's how you're going to get further in this game and make uh, better choices than worse. Um, you know, I, many of you should know this already. I started my journey in cryptocurrencies in uh, late 2012, early 2013. When I saw what Bitcoin was about, I immediately knew this was a game changer. Immediately knew it and went out that night. I actually went out that night and purchased my first 10 Bitcoins. And it's been history since then. And listen to people who who have been in this game for uh, many years, more than five years or so. You want to listen to those individuals too. Because they knew about this technology when it wasn't cool to know about it. They knew about it when it wasn't cool to talk about it. They knew about it when it was called magic internet money, right? So those individuals knew and had the foresight to know that this technology was a game changer. So uh, that, that's just my little spiel for today. We are going to look at Vitalik Buterin, kind of looking at uh, Monero's traceability issues when it comes to this particular type of attack called Flood XMR. And we'll take a quick look at it. I'll leave a link for you guys to read it in detail if you are more of a technical individual and want to know about this. But this is what I have been saying since last year, since 2017, actually. I like anonymous coins. 
but because we're uh, we're adding anonymity and these types of cryptography uh, algorithms to blockchain this is a new type of thing we're doing here and so they're still I'm not convinced that there are privacy coins that are fully vetted and, and ready for prime time and, and ready for me to be comfortable that I know that no time in the future will this algo be hacked this cryptographic algorithm that the privacy coins use many of them use different types of algorithms but what I'm saying is why this is different this go around is because unlike the internet when you're transacting and you know let's say you pay for something online it just needs to be encrypted that one event with blockchain it has to be encrypted and hold up indefinitely because at any point in the future if that algorithm gets cracked whether it be um, quantum computing quantum cryptography qubit functions the past can be decrypted and so you just I, that's why i'm always a little skeptical and and not really ready to go all in on the privacy coins that we have right now and i'm gonna be honest with you i'm probably more keen to using a privacy coin that is developed on more of a quantum level quantum cryptography type of uh level versus what we have today just because i know that quantum is the that's the last frontier you you really can't go any further than that when it comes to computational power and so with, at least with quantum encryption um I, I can feel safe that going forward my stuff will be encrypted any actions that i do on a blockchain will be encrypted I did post a video for those who are more technical to check out a piece done by PBS Space Time. I put it on Twitter and I posted it on YouTube, but it talks about this algorithm called BB84 that I think you guys should take a look at. It's kind of like SHA-256 on steroids, so check it out if you are interested in that type of comp sci stuff. But yeah, we'll take a look at what Vitalik Buterin has to say. He kind of took some jabs at Monero on this one. And then secondly, it seems to be that, that there's a report that suggests that the U.S. may be ready to go ahead with introducing more stringent regulations on cryptocurrencies. We're going to take a look at this article out of Decrypt Media. And this could be a tail risk that we will have to deal with here in the future, though it will only affect us um, in a very short term manner because cryptos will continue on that's the great thing about it it's almost like the honey badger it will just continue to go on and on and on third article is about this new HTC smartphone $300 smartphone at that very affordable smartphone that is going to run a full Bitcoin node this is big people I'm telling you and I'll explain why this is big we need this and uh, I'll explain a little bit more if the article doesn't but why this is so important to have the Vitalik Buterin article is the quick pick of the day so we won't read that fully but first let's take a look at this heat map Bitcoin at 6900 right now uh, up almost 1% this doesn't show the full scope of Bitcoin's rally in the last couple of days we've seen just about a thousand point move here and uh you, as you can see bitcoin is the big dog here a lot of the other altcoins are red right now you could look at that one of two ways either uh, you know the altcoins are foreshadowing what bitcoin's price is going to do here in the near future as far as a pullback coming or that this is a great buying opportunity for the alts you guys have to make that decision up for yourselves but bitcoin cash and bitcoin are the premier crypto currencies that are in the green today i think the market cap is at around 210 billion dollars can you believe we're back above 200 billion people bitcoin's dominance i think is at almost 60 percent wow that is crazy people that is crazy this is definitely bullish and i'm sure peter schiff is down there at his house with uh in puerto rico with noriel rubini and probably those hyperwave individuals trying to figure out what the hell went wrong here <laughs> because bitcoin definitely did not do what they thought it would it has taken off people and i'm still sticking with it those who follow me know i've been saying 3k was a bottom back in the middle of 2018 actually we'll see if i'm right or wrong on that one first article though 
is about Vitalik Buterin. I mean, the privacy, if you want to call it, vulnerabilities of Monero. It says here that uh, Vitalik Buterin expressed an interest in incorporating privacy features into Ethereum. He is partial to the ZK Snarks technology that is used in privacy coins like Zcash. Nonetheless, his senses appear to be particularly keen about any development surrounding privacy protocols. This became clear when a research paper was published entitled Flood XMR, Low-Cost Transaction Flooding Attack with Monero's Bulletproof Protocol. So it kind of goes on about that. And what Vitalik said regarding this is that privacy schemes where the anonymity set of a single transaction is smaller than the entire set of users of the scheme are looking weaker and weaker with every passing month. Wow. He's taking shots at a Monero there. What do you guys think? What is your favorite privacy coin at the moment? I, like I said, I, I used to really like Monero a lot. Nowadays, I, I like I said, I've just kind of turned my eye at privacy coins because from a technical standpoint, I'm just not convinced that these cryptographic protocols that have been implemented with these coins are going to hold or stand up to the test of time. So we'll have to see. I'll leave a link for you guys to check this out in totality. It's a good little read there about ZK Snark technology and why Vitalik thinks that that may be the way to go for them as far as Ethereum implementing privacy on their nodes. The first article though is out of CCN and is about this HTC new $300 smartphone called the Exodus 1S that can run a full Bitcoin node. It says that HTC plans to launch a second generation of the Exodus One blockchain smartphone by 2019, according to the company's chief decentralized officer, Phil Chen. The upcoming Exodus 15 or Exodus S, I can't tell what it is there, will provide more support for decentralized browsing, messaging, and social media apps or dApps but that's not all. The second generation blockchain smartphone will also be able to run a full Bitcoin node, HTC said Saturday. So with the $300 smartphone due in Q4 of 2019, you'll be able to contain the entire blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain, I should say, on your smartphone and verify transactions. Blockchain smartphones are designed to keep all of your information secure and in your control. That's accomplished by routing the information your smartphone transmits and receives through peer-to-peer -peer connections in the distributed network instead of passing through cloud or mainframe boards. If the technology now exists for anyone to secure their savings on an open source blockchain on a decentralized network, why not secure all their data? The only limits are the space and computing power, but these limits will be no issue in a few years. Some of the critics of big data companies may resort to overblown sensationalist alarmism, and the mainstream media does at times seem heavily biased against tech companies, but there are some sensible reasons to keep control over your data. The most obvious reason might be getting paid for your own data. If your data is valuable, why not retain control over it and get paid for it instead of giving it away? Another reason is privacy. Sure, we all know Apple and Alphabet are watching how we use our how we use their products and we all agree and we all agree to it for the benefits we get in return. But what about unwanted surveillance? Whether by sovereign states or cyber criminals, why trust private information in the hands of a third party when we can secure and authenticate the data our devices transmits ourselves? So this is interesting. I'm, I'm very excited about the full no aspect of this uh, device. And the simple reason is because if we can run a full node on our, on our phone, that means we can become less and less reliant on these mega pools to find blocks. And, you know, you can have your phone. You're going to use it anyway. You might as well have it looking for transactions or looking for blocks on the blockchain. And really, you're going to need this more and more as the halvings occur further and further down the line where the reward for mining becomes less and less attractive. So having phones, having devices where you're having full nodes on there is a great idea again it, it spreads the power uh, uh and concentration of hashing power 
away from these pools. So this is a very good direction. We're going with the HTC uh, smartphone here that's gonna run the full node. How do you feel about these types of phones? And would you be willing to carry one around? I think this is the future. Maybe not this particular one, but this is a step in the right direction in my opinion. So again, let me know your thoughts about this phone or what other solutions do you think are out there that will help take away the power of these mining pools out there on the blockchain. Second article is about FinCEN regulation and it says that there's a new report that suggests that the U.S. may be ready to go ahead with introducing more stringent regulations. U.S. financial regulator FinCEN published a guidance report yesterday on how cryptocurrencies are currently regulated to prevent financial crime. It provides advice for businesses across the crypto industry, including crypto wallets, exchanges, and ICO issuers. The FinCEN guidance came out ahead of scheduled report by the Financial Action Task Force, which held a controversial consultation in February. The most worrying element of the FAFT proposals in Regulation 7, Clause B, which would require cryptocurrency exchanges to submit personal finance data for all transactions. <laughs> At the same time, many in the crypto industry argue that this approach is infeasible and would require a new infrastructure layer to be built across cryptocurrencies. The new FinCEN report includes the FAFT proposal suggesting the decision has already been made the wrong way. Wow. To understand how this will affect the crypto industry, Decrypt spoke to Tiana Baker Taylor, executive director of industry membership body Global Digital Finance at the Ethereal Summit today. She said the timing of the FinCEN guidance is curious, adding that I would have thought that they might have waited until after the FATF published their further guidance. The question is, was the U.S. already resolute? on implementing these requirements. Marco Santori said on Twitter, today the US Treasury published massive new guidance on crypto regulation. It has major implications for wallets, exchanges, ICO issuers, dApps, and DEXs. Regulation 7B says that virtual asset service providers, that is crypto exchanges, should be held to the same standard as other financial service providers, such as banks or money transmitter services. The result would be that cryptocurrency transactions must also contain relevant information regarding the sender and the receiver. For example, an IBAN number contains the relevant country code, bank code, branch number, and account number. By comparison, cryptocurrency transactions are identified by a random string of alphanumeric digits. Cryptocurrency industry activists have argued that including this information would require a radical overhaul one that goes against the principles that this industry was founded upon. Baker Teller also goes on to say, it is also a question of ideology. If you don't want to rely on a trusted intermediary, which is kind of what fiat relies on, there are people who would say that's not what crypto was built for. Preventing financial crimes are important, but there are better ways than through this specific regulation, she said. She argued that it would be better for exchanges to have and retain this information and provide it to law enforcement when required, but that it doesn't need to be implemented into the cryptocurrency transactions itself. See, this is these are because people, you know, from the old system, the FAFT or whatever, they don't understand. They're still trying to put cryptocurrencies into this box of the old system, and it's not. It's not at all. I don't know why these people don't understand this. There got to be some millennials in there <laughs> that work in some of those departments that, that has to be like, look, this is this is retarded. This is impossible to implement. This is just recreating the old system in a, in a new and, and more uh, transparent way, which is definitely not what we're trying to do here, people. So what do you guys think about this new regulatory information that we've just gotten from FinCEN? and the FAFT. I don't even think this can be implemented. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just, I don't think this will be implemented. What we need is people to start using cryptos peer to peer. Stop relying on these exchanges. That's what I've been preaching for a long time now. Uh, Ever since early 2017, once we started getting new people into this community, you know, they may have come into into this community for financial gain and not really 
the ethos of cryptocurrencies so we have to remind people on a, on a daily basis look this is not we're not here to recreate swift in the financial system that we have today just in a faster and, and more decentralized manner no we're looking to create a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure where i can send money to whomever whenever and not be tracked or seized my you know my wallets seized for those actions you just got to watch out for this stuff people and i'm just going to continue to follow and track these types of developments because again a lot of people aren't talking about this and these are the topics we need to be abreast and aware of so that we know how to spread the word to other people newcomers to this game we gotta we gotta onboard them in the right way not through xrp right <laughs> that's pretty much it though for today ladies and gents shout out to my man out there frank bryson again for the song request long live tupac man he, he was definitely a legend in the hip-hop game all eyes on me it's your boy crypto blood and again happy mother's day to everyone out there 2019 that's my two satoshis for may 12 2019 i'm out of here people Holla.